afternoon, potential students. And you know that SM Jalil took the idea of Chubby, made it into a global brand, and is accounted for phenomenal growth of that company. So today, I'm going to speak to you about growing your business. So, growth, be it an organism or an organization, growth should come naturally, should it? As we saw in the slide with the normal graph, you can decline. So it may not always be natural for organization. But let's start by asking you, how do we measure growth? Usually, you would hear about increase in sales, the company is growing. Hopefully it will lead to an increase in profits. And because of that, if you're in the stock market, it will give you a higher share price. And because shareholders don't only look towards a dividend, they look for capital gains, we now speak about enhanced shareholder value. Are those good indications of growth? Anyone? Good? What if I say, no? If you notice the common theme across there, with all four, is they are based on financial measures. They are all based on some form of financial yardstick. And you know what? That can be misleading. Why? Because these are all measures of the past. And when we are thinking of growth, we should be thinking about it future. And let me prove it to you. If it's speaking about shareholder value, what we are really saying is we are talking about what we call the intrinsic value of the underlying operation. In case you're not too sure about that, we'll get into it when you're in my financial management class. But just to, in short, what we are saying is that we take the present value of the future past three. That is to say, what is the potential of the company to make a future stream of cash. What is that worth for us today? And what we find is that that future cash stream is really a function not of past indicators, of past increased sales and customers and so on. It is about what is the future. It's based on non-financial measures. So the question we should be asking is, is our management up to date? What is about our customer base? Is it strong and growing? How are we doing in relation to customers? Are we delivering value? Are we thinking flexibly and innovatively? And you would hear a lot more with innovation later on. And I'm sure you can add a few to that. But if you look at it carefully, and if you had the time, I'm sure you'll figure it out yourself. You'll see one common theme running through all these. And there's a fundamental question we answer. Anyone care to suggest what that fundamental question is? There's a prize involved. The question is, are we ready for change? Because the fact of the matter is growth is equal to change. Because we are speaking about the future. Are we ready for change? Why do we need to change? Let me ask you another question. I know you're feeling like you're in a class now with the amount of questions you had already. But this is a simple one. This is a simple yes or no. Can you stay constant and still change? Some paradoxical, right? Can you stay constant and still change? There's more prizes involved. The question is most definitely yes. Let me tell you why. 
Because if you are constant, and everything around you change, then the only position that matters changes. And that's the relative position. So for instance, let's say you're selling snow cone. You're in the block selling your snow cone. How much you have snow cone now? That is high class milk. <laughs> You say three or four dollars for a snow cone. You're selling your snow cone four dollars. A very competitive, innovative snow cone man come next to you, and he's selling his snow cone for three dollars. You still at four dollars, but your relative price has changed. If the speakers before me came and spoke for two minutes, and then I had came here and speak for half an hour, I would seem relatively longer. And it's the same thing. We're constant. But because the relative position has changed, you are changed and you are still constant. No, that's just the price. Think about it. What will happen if technology changes? If your market is changing, if the skills level are changing, standards are changing. In fact, if the world is changing. And I look at all these, and you know what I think about? West Indies cricket. Everything else is changing and we're still negotiating. The world of cricket has changed. Cricket is now commercialized. And the same thing, and this holds not only for an organization, it holds for individuals, it holds for a country. If you stay constant, everything around you change. And that is what is happening. Dr. McDonald implored us in his first presentation that thing that defines our era is the pace of change. So you can be constant and change it. So if you don't change, think of what can happen. It could be catastrophic for us. No. Another question. How has the world been changing? Has the world been changing? That one is right? No price for that one. We're sure it's changing. And this is some of the ways you 